All right, here we go, guys. We're going to continue on with example two, part B, uh, finding a region bounded by two functions. And um, so we have the two functions. Now, I'm going to just ignore a part of this problem to, to hopefully make a point about this. What, what the heck is that interval all about? Let's just say, for the sake of argument, you got excited and you said, I'm going to set these equal to each other and solve them. X squared plus 4 equals 2, right? Y equals this, Y equals that. Let's set the this and that equal to each other. And you use just algebra to solve this. So um, inverse operations would be where it's at. And so X squared would equal negative 2, square root, square root. And then hopefully this would be the point where you go, wait a minute, the square root of a negative number. What? That's imaginary. All right? So there are no real values of X where these two things intersect each other. It's an unbounded region. And as we develop the picture, we will see that moving onward. What did we just learn here? They don't cross each other. These two graphs don't cross each other. Okay, so what do we do? Well, that's where the interval part comes into play. They don't cross each other. It's an unbounded region. That's why whoever made up this question, you're looking at him, said, oh, by the way, we want to look at the interval from negative 1 to 4. So we're defining basically for you the interval on the x-axis from negative 1 to 4. All right, to further, I hope not complicate, but to confirm things, if you wanted to make your picture somewhat accurate, you could start with the negative 1, and if you put that in here, negative 1 squared is 1 plus 4 would be 5, and negative 1 plugged in for x here would give you 2. Notice they're not equal. We already established with simple algebra that they're never going to be equal. One curve is always above the other. Always. They never cross. And this confirms that. You will notice that one of the curves is at negative 1, 2, and the other one is at negative 1, 5. Different. They never cross. We just proved that earlier, didn't we? All right. 4, the other end, 4 squared is 16 plus 4, that's 20. And 4 plugged in the other one. It's 2, right? X isn't even in that equation. X always equals 2. So over here at 4, one of them plots with 2, and the other one plots up here at 20. All right, I'm the first to acknowledge here that my scale is really messed up here terribly. You know, if that's 5, there's no way that's 20. Don't worry about it. It's just a rough sketch. I think we're already finding. Look. Well, okay. I'll go on. I don't really see a need to test a number, but I guess I will anyway. If you picked a number in the middle there between the two, like zero, and plug it into both, this one's going to give you four, and this one is going to give you two. All right, so again, one of the graphs comes up here at four, the other one comes at two. Here's the idea. Here's the idea. When we're establishing upper and lower here, and, and this is overkill what I did, but I'm just trying to convince you that every y value over here is above all the y values over here. Because this graph is always above that one. Always. They never cross. So we have the fact that we've got this upper one that passed through these three points, and we've got this lower one that passes through these three points, and they never cross over the entire x-axis. Again, this is why the interval had to be specified. So. From negative 1 to 4, this would be the region that's bounded by the 2. They never cross. So there we go. We've got our upper and our lower. And so now it's just a matter of setting up our integral. And so the area between these two curves over the interval from negative 1 to 4 would be that x squared plus 4 f of x. Oh, okay, let's put the label here. Oh, you're, you're, you, left-hand function, you're always above that other one, always. They never cross. So I'm going to call you f of x, and we'll call you g of x, just to be consistent with the notes here. And, uh, you know, f of x green, g of x red. Colors don't matter. I'm just trying to make them match the notes. And I hope 
you can see the colors on the board and you'll you see the colors in the notes that were uploaded to you and so we're taking that upper curve we're subtracting from it the lower function which really isn't a curve it's a line and uh, with respect to x mechanical here we go let's simplify that integrand 4 minus 2 so that would change into x squared plus 2 you know if you can ever simplify your integrand I want to remind you that's the expression within the integral and then here we go again integrate and evaluate so we find the antiderivative of this this is easy these are just terms x cubed over 3 plus 2x and that will be evaluated between negative 1 and 4 and you guys know the drill you put 4 in for x and crunch it out you put negative 1 in for x and crunch it out and then you just subtract the 2 so that's actually a arithmetic if you really want to be snobby about it and so the remaining number crunching is something we hope by now totally makes sense to you and that turns out to be 95 over 3 otherwise known as 31 and 2 thirds otherwise known as 31.6 repeating any of those will work for me I don't care and then of course calculate good times come on and that's where we go and dance on out of here so that takes care of the sign number 28 upper minus lower integrate evaluate celebrate calculate up and play the whole thing, all right?